Hello, 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 everybody. We are live and direct here on the WZBR base of Boston. You are listening to Life is Fabulous with Anna Foster. And my special guest today is Yahara Lopez, founder and CEO of... <laughs> We're here. Yeah, here. Autism Sprinter. Welcome. Welcome to the base of Boston. Thank you for having me. This is exciting. Thank exciting. you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, hold on one second. We're going to get that turned down just a tad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goosby. <laughs> so we are excited to have you here today on this Sunday afternoon. I know you have a great program running out of Boston, Massachusetts. Yes, ma'am. Straight out of Roxbury. Straight too. out of Roxbury. Born and raised? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, I was born in Puerto Rico, but definitely raised all my life in Roxbury. I hear that. Puerto Rico is one of my favorite, favorite, absolute know, favorite I've places. Seen you. <laughs> Those kitchens are just too fabulous. I'm like, we did that the sun, the water. I like, I've been okay. to Puerto Rico probably about seven times. A great place to visit. Quick trip, no passport needed. When's That's the last right. time you've been to Puerto Rico? Wow. Been home. It's been a while. It's been a minute. It's been a while. And when you go, take me with you. Oh, man. <laughs> Next time I go, I got I got bags to carry with kids, iPads, and all that type oh, of mess. Awesome. Like, I got to get ready. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, again, welcome to the base of Boston. We are so glad to have you today. And we're talking about something serious in nature, yes. Yes. right? Yes. Yes. We're talking about individuals that proceed in life. We're not going to say suffer. Right. that proceed in life with autism, that are on the autism spectrum. And it's real. And it's real. And it's especially real for people in the community. Absolutely. And I think that, in, especially in the urban community, we don't have these discussions. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's easier to kind of hide behind our doors mm -hmm. and kind of hide our loved ones with a special need mm -hmm. because we're fearing to be judged or people looking at us um and, and just simply being judgmental mm -hmm. so i think that so is that part of why you started the program i started Tell us a little bit about you personally so i'm a mother of twins and okay. my twins were born prematurely mm -hmm. and at the age of two they were diagnosed with autism both of them and so at the age of two i say that we started with it was like I just felt like a whole bunch of like bricks being thrown at me mm -hmm. because it's like, oh, here, you're, you have a child on the spectrum, mm -hmm. um, call these people, mm -hmm. get these help. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. I, at that moment, didn't even fully understand what autism was. All I know that I've seen my, my son struggling mm -hmm. and I just wanted to help, whether it's speech, whatever it was, I just needed help. Mm -hmm. And so I started with early intervention. Mm -hmm. Then it went from early intervention to now they needed 25 hours of ABA, mm -hmm. um, which is behavior um, therapy. Then it was OT, the occupational stuff to help with the gross motor stuff. Mm -hmm. And we needed speech because our speech was delayed. So I'm dealing and with- you're not doing this with one, you're doing this with, with two. two. I started with two, yes. So then I'm like, oh my goodness, like what am I doing here? Mm -hmm. So I didn't even know who to call. So I know that I had two friends at that moment that I, officially knew whose children were on the spectrum. So I'm calling them and I'm like, hey, I have no idea what to do. And like and you did that you did that like how how far after your children were born? Because obviously you went through pregnancy, you think you you you're thinking you're gonna have a normal pregnancy, mm -hmm. your children were premature. Mm -hmm. And, and then don't test for it. It's not like right. they can test for it like they would test with cerebral like, palsy exactly. or something like that. So mm -hmm. there's no test for it. I you know they were born we were you know they were <coughs> developing yep. and just certain things came up and then it was like okay now this right um, right right now what what age do you normally find out that your children or your child has autism I think with, with some people it's as early as you find these signs and I okay. think that what happened with me was that I knew that I had so they're milestones children. yeah like reaching certain exactly milestones. so when we were going through the milestones I'm watching and I'm like, okay, wait a minute, something's not going on here, mm -hmm. and some something's going on here, and so 
I think it was because I was so proactive at it, mm -hmm. and I started seeing these things, and I would go to my doctor. Even my own doctor at that moment mm -hmm. was like, oh, you're comparing them. Okay. They're twins. Don't right. compare them. And this was them. probably before they were, what, six months yeah. that you started asking Yeah, the but they were like, one of them's crawling, and the other one of them is just laying there. He wouldn't even crawl. Right. It was just like little things, and, the, and my doctor, again, kept saying, stop comparing them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, all right. So a month delay turned into two months delay, mm -hmm. to three months delay, until one day I said, I'm not leaving here until you give me the referral because wow. although you're saying stop comparing them mm -hmm. one of them is moving faster than the other mm -hmm. so that's when you know after basically telling the doctor no I mean yeah you get paid but I'm a certified mom and right. I think that my did you have do you have any other children that no. are also after that first time being done. a mom <coughs> right and you were aware that some of these milestones they were just not reaching exactly so you started asking a lot of questions Question. which is very important because you want you have to ask the questions early mm -hmm. so you didn't just leave it up to the experts and the doctors I did not you, you were being proactive how old are your boys now there's six going on seven wow. so now only one of them is on the spectrum mm -hmm. and the other one has a splash of ADHD so we've gone from like for one of my sons we've gone from autism to communication processing mm -hmm. to now we're at ADHD mm -hmm. so you know I it's just the label mm -hmm. and the way I see them those are my sons so I right. gotta do what I gotta do anyway but the journey to say the least has been a ride of course it's been a, 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 a ride and I think that me founding Autism Sprinter was pretty much my my I was to my wit's end and I was mm -hmm. like okay listen there's no way that parents like myself should be having to go through what we're going through why do we have to fight our, our specialists, our pediatricians, to simply give us a referral, just mm -hmm. to, to, to get us some answers? Now let's talk about that. Why do you think that they don't want to give you the referral? What's that about? What does that look I like? Don't, I mean, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know if there's in-house in politics behind that. Mm -hmm. So um, it's certain services yeah. that would come along if it's, they put the label. Exactly. Okay. So if, if you get a diagnosis of any type of, you know, whether it's autism, developmental delay, mm -hmm. Down syndromes and things like that, there's this extra help that you would So there's money to be spent towards the services. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you know how that goes. Right. And so um, I started this because I think I spent so much time getting lost behind the label. Mm -hmm. And what year, what year was Autism Sprinter found? It was founded in 2014. Okay, so in a couple March, of years. Okay. In, March, in March of 2014. Mm -hmm. And how it started was that at that time I was working for the public school system. Okay. And were you I working was, with children? Yes, okay. I was actually working in a sub-separate, in a sub-separate setting with kids with a multiple diagnosis, mm -hmm. autism, Down syndrome, developmental delay. Wow, so that's, yeah, ADHD. I mean, that's, well, let's talk about that a little bit, because you do find that in the school system. They do not know what to do with children and, and adults that have <laughs> special needs. So they're grouping them in subsection Sub-separate. Sub -sub -separate. Sub separate classrooms, mm -hmm. but they all have different needs. Yes. You find that more in the inner city versus uh, the suburb areas? Or what's your thoughts on that? So these are my thoughts behind that. So I've worked in a public school system. I worked for them for about seven years. Mm -hmm. And so what I've noticed is, yes, there's increasing numbers of kids of color mm -hmm. in special ed classrooms. Okay. Um, you have a program called the lab learning adaptive behavior one okay. why would anybody name a program like that especially with kids who have behavior issues it's like my it's my kid a part of your lab mm -hmm. you know experiment i don't mm -hmm. get it you haven't heard that term in a long yeah, time so it's mm -hmm. been, but it exists okay um and i know that they're tr they they work towards changing mm -hmm. it i i mean I, i've been out of the public school system for for pretty much time. since I yeah. founded Autism Sprinter. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hoping that they don't use that term mm -hmm. as often as it was being used. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of kids of color are in those classrooms. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they have the diagnosis. So they And they have diagnosis. Okay. Most of them have diagnosis. Some of them actually don't. Some mm -hmm. of them, you don't need a, a diagnosis actually to end up on an ed plan. Okay. On, a, on an IEP. And we're going to talk about IEPs too. So a you don't later need a diagnosis. It's mm -hmm. more or less if you're struggling academically right. and a teacher notices it mm -hmm. just in time, she can say, we need to get this child So you're it. saying that in this lab, <laughs> classroom you have children that 
are considered special needs but don't actually have a diagnosis of developmental delay Delaying. or autism and they're all in one class yeah it, it's uh, the lab is typically kids w with severe behavior issues that can't typically function in a so-called regular ed mm -hmm. classroom um so they're pretty much grouped all kids with behavior issues in like at least one of the schools that i was in and i won't name no names yeah but there was a quarter mm -hmm. where it was just specifically for kids with special and lab and they're away from the regular class re regular mm -hmm. classrooms mm -hmm. and i'm like how are we actually going to teach these kids right to interact mm -hmm. appropriately if they're not even given the opportunity to be included right with the general ed right and then we're using terms like to me, I feel like institutional terms, mm -hmm. like general population. Mm -hmm. and like, that sounds like a jail term. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you don't mm -hmm. use terms like that. Mm -hmm. Although, it's, because they're labels. Right. It's not, it's, mm -hmm. it's so that it's a label. So, from, I think from my experience, it's being in a public school system, I, at least I had the upper hand to see an array right. of different things, right? right? So, kids with physical disabilities, yep. kids with behavior issues, yep. kids with, um, mental health issues so right. I was exposed to all of that stuff so I think that when it came to me to become a parent um, and I started seeing certain things I think I was just like wait a minute I gotta get on this real quick because mm -hmm. the longer because I wait new. the harder yeah. it's gonna be for me mm -hmm. and so that's how it happened for me mm -hmm. um, and, so and when you were in the school system I mean obviously you handle and you see things differently when it personally affects you mm -hmm. when you were in the school system as a you know a teacher or you know a staff member mm -hmm. did you see these children differently when you were in that role versus when you became a mom of I, I treated the kids all the same okay. I feel like approach is crucial mm -hmm. your approach is crucial crucial when you're dealing with kids especially in an urban community especially kids who probably the only meal they get it's in school yeah I hear or that a lot kids, from um, teachers and yeah or kids system. who come from such a broken home that a, a certain tone just right sets them off and I think that me and several other amazing people there are in a public school system our approach is very like yo what's right. up like come right. on like, what, for what's kids. going on yeah. today mm -hmm. what can we do for you and if it's as simple as you missed the bus and one of us got to ride you home Right. let's do it That's you know it because is. it's all about the village it's about creating that village to letting our kids know that they are people in a community who mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. really care about them right. And, and now you're taking that approach with autism right and now. that's it that's my approach my approach is very telling parents say listen it's just a label yep. don't get caught up behind that label because that's how it happened to me I was so caught up in the label mm -hmm. and everything oh he does this because he's autistic right he, you know they do this because they're autistic right and then it's like I'm like wait a minute my son is not a label right my son he's is more than his that. name is Jameer aka right. Juju right you know and that's Juju right. you know Juju and Juju. he may do that because he's autistic or he may do it for just because, because that's just Juju <laughs> right because he's know? six and yeah. exactly uh -huh. and so what I learned was not to basically put that stamp on my son. Mm -hmm. And once I actually understood my son versus trying to Google everything and yep. spend endless nights on Google, yep. um, when I actually physically learned how to who learn your child, and who your child exactly, is. Mm -hmm. learn and observe my son, I was better to say, all right, this is my son. This right. is what it is. And it made it easier for me to deal with him hmm. instead of, you know, my mom can tell you she's back here recording me. She's like, oh, mom, <laughs> hey, mommy, what's going on? Um, and she'll tell you, like, I, I sat at Walmart, Target, and all those places broke down crying because yep. I'm like, oh, my goodness, this is like meltdown 50,001 today. Mm, right. Or, you know, we're still in diapers and we're close to four. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so my mom kind of went through the motions with me. And mm -hmm. it one of the reasons why I stand here today and I can honestly say I'm not as stressed out as I was right. was because she said to me don't worry about that support I, uh, support she had she gave me that support she prayed mm. she always made sure that she was at church praying mm -hmm. for him um and then you have people like my brother who's recorded right. back there you know <laughs> that as soon as I started you know putting shirts out he right. was like let me get some let me right. you know let me right. put it out there you know my dad you know my dad is just my dad yeah. you know and he the connection that he has with my son mm -hmm. I, I honestly believe that my son probably loves 
my father and my niece Jassidy right. probably then he loved me and dad <laughs> like it's, yeah. it's just that extra connection yeah. and love um, and I think that when I started this I was making sure that families knew mm -hmm. you can do this yourself mm -hmm. you know stop waiting on waiting lists for six months to a year right. for somebody to come to your house yeah. and give you this support well, like, we're going to talk more about that yeah, so for so you guys it's, just it's, tuning it's, in it's a lot. she has a lot, lot to say we're here with your your hair Lopez CEO and founder of Autism Sprinter. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. Stay tuned.